Spread it back. Okay, so now that we created that board object, uh, we're going to make a couple scripts here and attach them to our board and our game tile. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder. I'm going to right click and choose create a C sharp script. And I'm going to call this first one just board. Um, I'm going to go to my board object, which is in the scene. Just click on it to highlight it. And then I'm going to pull my board script onto it. Just like that. I'm going to make another script here in my folder. C sharp script. And I'm going to call this background tile. And then I'm going to find my prefabs folder. So over here, click on my prefabs, bring up my tile background, and then I'm going to go back over to my script and pull on this background tile script to bring it on here. If that doesn't work for you, you can just click add component, scroll down here and choose scripts, and then from here you can choose background tile, and that'll add that component. Okay, so first I want to open up my board script. So I'm going to double click that. I'm using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2017. It's free, um, but you can definitely be using MonoDevelop, which comes with Unity. There's not really a huge difference between the two. Uh, MonoDevelop is a little less twitchy as far as braces go, and Visual Studio is a little better as far as autocomplete and prediction goes. So it's kind of a bit of one, a bit of the other, whichever your preference is. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a couple imagers to reference how wide and how tall I want my board to be. So I'm going to do public int width, which is how many cells wide I want it to be, and public int height, which is how many cells tall I want it to be. So if you're kind of picturing this, let me kind of jump to the paper here. Okay, so if I take a look at my paper here, um, the number of cells that you want is going to be completely up to you. So Candy Crush does some things where it has kind of some unique cell backgrounds, and we can maybe talk about doing that as we go on. But our cells are going to be created kind of like an XY axis. So we're going to consider this cell right here to be cell 1, 1, meaning it's 1 in the width and 1 in the height. This one here would be cell 1, 2, meaning it's 1 in the width and 2 in the height. Something like this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be cell 5, 5. Let's take a look. So in Visual Studio, we have our width, which is how many cells wide we want it to be, and we have our height. We're also going to create something called a two-dimensional array. So a two-dimensional array is something that can hold multiple things in two different places, kind of like an XY position. So we're going to create a private, and this is going to be background tile. And then I'm going to use these uh, square braces for the array. But then I'm going to put a parentheses just right there. Now, whenever, oh, and I need to name it as well. And I'll call this all tiles. Whenever I create an array, so by creating a variable like this, what I'm doing is I'm creating an empty container down here. In my start method, I want to tell it how big that container should be. I'm not filling it yet, but I'm telling it how big it should be. So I'm going to say all tiles equals new background tile. And then in square braces, I'm going to do width by height. So this here creates this empty two-dimensional array with the a first attribute and a second attribute. And then this down here in the start method creates, it doesn't fill it in yet, but it tells it how big it wants those two attributes to be. So in the editor, I'll choose a width and a height. And this is kind of creating that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method here outside of update. You don't need the update method. This script is going to be used for just a few things. So I'm going to call this, uh, this is a private void and we'll call it setup. And this is going to instantiate all of our background tiles. Oh, I want to do one more thing up here in my global variables. I want to do a public 
game object. I'm going to call this tile prefab, which is the tile I want to create. So now, um, I'm going to be using two for loops here to create my background tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than width, so i is going to represent the x coordinate, the left and right, i plus plus, then I'm going to do something. Okay, so what a for loop does is it creates an initial value and it'll run through the code and then it'll increase that value. Oops, made a mistake here. It'll increase that value by one in this case. That's the way I have it set up each time. And then um, it'll keep running through the loop until uh, this middle condition is met. So this first condition creates the variable. The last condition increases it. And the middle condition is what needs to be met in order for it to end. And I'm going to create another for loop inside of it. So this is a for loop that's going left to right. So like I'll start on the zero position and then I'll go up from there. And then I'm going to um, instantiate or create a tile at each Y position kind of going up that row. So for, and I used I last time. So I'm going to use J this time. J is equal to zero. J is less than height. J plus plus. And here's where we're actually going to create the tiles. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, uh, let's say, instantiate, which is a command that's built into Unity. And when you do instantiate, there's three parameters that have to go into it. What you're instantiating, the position you're instantiating that, and the rotation of the object you're instantiating. So the object I'm instantiating is the tile prefab. I'm going to come back to where I'm going to instantiate it in just a second. And then the rotation I'm going to give it is quaternion.identity, which just means it's regular rotation. So now I need to come up with a vector position for it here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say uh, vector2 temp position, which is the temporary position of the tile, is equal to, uh, let's say, i. Uh, and this is going to give me trouble because they're not floats. Oh, oh that's why. <laughs> New vector 2. Okay, cool. And then down here, I'm going to have it instantiate at the temp position. Okay, there's more that we're going to do with this, but for now, I kind of just want to save my script, pop back into Unity, and assign a few things. So uh, it's compiling, which is what that little circle down there means. I'm going to go to my board. I'm going to say I have one on width of 4 and a height of 7. And then it needs to know what the tile prefab is. I'm going to go over to prefabs, grab my tile background, and just set it right there. Now if I hit play, we'll see what happens. Do -do -do. Oh, nothing happened. <laughs> And the reason nothing happened is I created this method, but I never called it. So for my start method, I'm going to do setup, open close parentheses, and then a semicolon. So I'll save that. Pop back into Unity again. Let it compile again. And now when I hit play, you should see the tile background be created. And there we go. Now, it's kind of off-center, but it goes four tiles wide and seven tiles tall. So what I'm going to do to fix this, and the reason it does that is because it creates the first one at zero, zero, and then it creates all the wide tiles, and then it moves over, creates the next one at uh, zero, one, and goes up, zero, two, or sorry, one, zero, two, zero, and three, zero. So zero, zero, uh, zero, or sorry, one, zero, geez, two, zero, and three, zero. Now I want to move my camera I'm going to move it, uh, let's see, let's get out of play mode first. I'm going to move it to an X position of, let's say, 2.5, and a Y position of, let's say, 5. I want to see how that looks really quickly here. So if I zoom out a little bit, press play, and let's take a look at how it is. Oh, okay. 
So I'm a little too tall and a little too far over. So let's change our X position to 1.5. That's better. And let's change our Y position to, say, 3. Yeah, that's pretty good. So one thing that happens is if you change your values while you're in this uh, edit mode, they're not actually going to stay there when you click on play. So right now I just want to remember those values, 1.5 and 3. So my X value is 1.5 and my Y value is 3. I'm click play again, and I should see my... There we go. Cool. This is kind of a mess because it's kind of all over here, but we'll talk about how we can fix that. Uh, one more thing I want to do really quickly here. I kind of hate this Unity blue background, so I'm going to choose something that's kind of like a gray to give me some contrast with my background. See how I like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, cool. So there we go. We've set up our tile board script and we've made it so that we are creating a nice, neat, organized grid. Uh, next time, we'll look at adding some objects to this grid so that we can actually get into the meat of the gameplay. Thank you very much. I hope this finds you well and have a good night.